Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is June the 5th, 2024. Let's talk boxing, but remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's very important to know the real history of some of the events in boxing. Let's talk about one of the most hype fights in boxing history. The fight that took place March the 8th, 1971, between unbeaten Muhammad Ali and his good friend. Before, of course, they signed for the fight and then Ali kind of overdid the promotion. Unbeaten heavyweight champion, Joe Frazier. Right now, understand there was a big player involved, the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers, who, different times in life, would also own the Los Angeles Kings, as well as the Toronto Maple Leafs, and of course the Washington Redskins. That was Jack Kent Cook, right? You might see his picture next to the word mogul in your dictionary, right? This was the sports mogul. Jack Ken Cook owned the fabulous forum in Los Angeles. He wanted this big fight to help his arena. There was a problem, right? The fans did not know it. The fans were kept in the dark. This happens from time to time. But believe it or not, with all of Jack Ken Cook's connections, with all of his power, he could not have the fight at his venue, the Fabulous Forum, in Southern California because unbeaten heavyweight champion Joe Fraser was blind in one eye. Right, folks? This is before Ali Fraser won. Joe Fraser is blind in one eye. So here's how they saved the fight. And understand, the source for this story is Joe Fraser himself before he died, right? The way they saved the fight was that they had a doctor in New York who looked the other way, passed Joe Fraser in his eye exam. So you had this mega fight take place at Madison Square Garden right, a venue we now consider the mecca of boxing, just to understand, Madison Square Garden was not the first choice for the fight. The first choice was the fabulous forum, but Fraser could not pass the California eye exam. Right? Not surprisingly, the rematch took place in New York. Not surprisingly, the third fight took place in Manila, right? What you want to do is you want to look at where highly touted fighters are fighting. And then you need to ask yourself, how strenuous are the regulatory bodies in that location, right? I can tell you the great Emmanuel Stewart had a fighter who he thought was an uncrowned champion. They fought the champion in Texas at a time when, let's just say, the Texas Boxing Commission was a little bit loose. The contract actually called for a post-fight drug test. Stewart, who of course, at different times, was the trainer for Thomas Hearns, uh, Lennox Lewis, uh, Vladimir Klitschko, in other words, let's just say that Emmanuel Stewart was an A-level trainer. Stewart, with ample experience, not just as a boxer, but as a trainer, thought that the other guy clearly was enhanced, thought that the champion who his fighter was fighting was juicing. After the fight, of course, the champion was to provide a urine sample in accordance with 
protocol and the contracts the fighters had signed. Of course, the fighter goes into the bathroom unmonitored with other people, comes out and gives a urine sample, passes the urine test. Emmanuel Stewart was so incensed because he felt that the guy was juicing and had evaded the test, but he didn't have a muscular sanctioning body. Uh, boxing commission in the state of Texas and he was so irate he went public with the story and I'm here sharing it with you now right so understand the powers that be with all the money on the line sometimes will look the other way Joe Fraser will somehow be unable to fight in the state of California but yet able to fight in New York City Right. The key is you have to know when not to take the test. In other words, they privately knew that Joe Fraser could not pass in California. So they set it up where Joe Fraser tested with a friendly eye doctor in New York. Right now I say that because Jaron Ennis, with a new promoter, uh, was going to fight in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is serious about fighter safety. He was going to fight unbeaten Cody Crowley. I was here online talking about Cody Crowley and pointing out that Crowley, who's unbeaten, uh, had sparred at the Mayweather gym, just like Jack Catterall. And that Crowley was the kind of guy who might be underrated. He might be one of these guys who has sparred privately against much better competition than he had actually officially fought professionally. Right? This guy, not a knockout puncher, but this guy might be the kind of slick boxer who could have given a rusty Jaron Ennis all kinds of problems. Well, believe it or not, the fight is now off. We're learning that Cody Crowley, nicknamed the Crippler, failed his pre-fight eye exam. We're even finding out that Cody Crowley apparently had recently had eye surgery. Right? That's how bad his eye is. Understand, his eye injury is an existentialist threat to his boxing career. You've had a number of fighters who were on top, on top, when they suffered eye injuries. Look up Sandy Sadler. Understand, we celebrate Willie Pep. Sandy Sadler is the guy who won that boxing series. Right? Great knockout puncher. At one point, was in the corner of George Foreman, right? One of his relatives, I think he's the uncle or something like that, was Grandmaster Flash, the hip-hop pioneer. Understand, Sandy Sadler was on top when he was in a car crash and suffered an eye injury that ended his career, right? Understand. Sonny Liston's last loss was to Leotis Martin. Understand that Leotis Martin, according to Ring Magazine, right, the Bible of boxing is how we used to refer to Ring. Leotis Martin was one of the 100 biggest punchers in boxing history. This was a talented guy. He beats... Sonny Liston, with whom he had sparred in the past, suffers an eye injury. It ends his career. Right? Understand the seriousness of eye injuries. The word's out now. Cody Crowley, unbeaten, failed his eye test in Pennsylvania. Folks, they played this the wrong way. 
he should have privately, on his own, gotten his eye tested, figured out if he could have passed or failed the test. He should have been eliminated as an opponent if he could not pass the strenuous Pennsylvania eye exam. Right? If he never took the test, we wouldn't know. And he would then be able to cherry pick locations where he could continue his career. Instead, we now know that he failed the test. Understand, that gives opponents cover to avoid him. Right? The idea is, hey, Cody failed the test in Pennsylvania, um, I'm not going to fight him because I believe he's injured. Boxing is a cat and mouse survival of the fittest. Right? There are a lot of guys out there who want a title. There are very few titles out there. Right? Cody Crowley's career right now is in jeopardy. Just be aware of that. Let me also point out, too, Jaron Ennis has not fought in quite some time. Now, this fight, of course, is being canceled. If they bring in a last-minute opponent, that opponent might not be credible with the public. Right? So people need to Look at Jaron Ennis, and they need to realize this guy is rusty. They need to ask the question, how long is it going to take him to get back in the saddle? Right? Just be aware of the fact that arguably the best at 147 has just had an opponent involuntarily withdraw from a fight, is looking for a dance partner, and might not be able to get one because of the timing. Right? Just be aware of the fact that if you're going to fight Jaron Ennis, the best time to do so as an opponent is when he's rusty. And if this fight gets canceled and Ennis is not back in the ring anytime soon, if there's another four or five month delay, then the best time to fight Jared Ennis would be then. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Let me also point out too some other facts. Harry Greb when he died, and granted, this is years ago, but Greb is one of the all time greats. When Harry Greb died, they did an autopsy on his body. Right? This is the early part of the 20th century. And they found out that he was blind in one eye. They don't know how many fights Greb fought. Greb was known as the human windmill. They don't know how many fights Greb fought. Blind in one eye. Right? Food for thought. Right? Let's just say boxing has a long history of guys having eye problems. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.